And they're up. Episode 6, Sergio Castillo. Let's go. And they're up, Edmonton. The Elks are on the board. There it is. And they're up, Edmonton. Touchdown, Elks. Cornelius will throw to the outside to Shy Ross. At the 10 to the 5. And they're up, Edmonton. Touchdown, Elks. Sergio, thanks for spending some time with us. Appreciate it. How are you today? Uh, pretty good. First of all, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, you know, just here to... Uh, Use this platform. Hopefully, we uh, I know we'll have a good time, good chat. So, uh, ready to get the, these stories on the on the table for sure. All right, pressure's on now. Yeah, pressure's on now. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to start with your football resume. Yes. I was looking at it. Eleven teams, Dude. four leagues yeah. in the last ten years. Uh-huh. What's that like? It's been fun. Um, first of all, because I growing up, I never anticipated having a career in football. My thing was soccer, soccer, soccer. Right. Um, and, grow, and the funny thing is I disliked football a lot, you know, growing up just because all the kids in our middle school, you know, they thought they were a little all that, right? And uh, so, but, you know, I'm 31 years old. started kicking when I was 15 years old. So I'm, you know, 16 years into this craft. And it's led me to, for me, it's travel all over, you know, three countries, which is the United States, Mexico, in Canada, right? And Canada has given me the opportunity to live this professional career and led me to have a, you know, short stint in the NFL. And I say Mexico because now I've always wanted to bring back to, you know, to to Mexico, which is where my family's from. And and I've been able to start several kicking camps down south now and being able to help kids, you know, get an opportunity by earning a scholarship in the United States. So it's been, for me, it's, it's been, I've been, uh, given the name, I guess, a journeyman, right? But for me, it's like I get to visit all these cool cities. My family gets to come meet different people, different cities. So it's been nothing but a blessing for me. I was talking to Matt Mengel last week. Uh, he's not as old as you, hasn't been doing it as long as you, but same situation. He's been going from town to town to town. And mm-hmm. that's kind of the life of a pro kicker, is it not? Uh, it is. To if a you, certain extent, you're, you you're a journeyman. A journeyman. If you think about it, there's only 32 jobs in the NFL. There's nine in the CFL, so that's 41. If you count the eight of the USFL, we're at 49. If you count the other eight in the XFL, it'll be coming up. So 49, we're at 57 uh, now. So there's only 57 jobs in the whole world, right? And there's probably another good 60 to 70 guys out there that can do the same job. And so... And there's seven of them graduating every year too, yeah, right? There's, there's, there's hundreds. You know, if you, th- you think about it, there's over 700 universities in the United States alone, right? On top of you know, here you have Canada, and then you have now the Globals coming in, right? So there's a lot of competition out there. It's it's a it's a dog world out there, yeah. right? And the little opportunities that you get, you got to learn to take advantage of them. And sometimes you get them right off the bat, or sometimes you're like Matt and I that, you know, we've had to go through several teams and find land in a good situation, a scenario where it allows us to show what we can do. All right, I don't have them in order. I wrote them down, though. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to quiz you here now. Can you name your stops in order? Yes. Uh, Let's hear it. So 2014, <clears throat> Atlanta Falcons. 2015, Hamilton. 2015, Winnipeg. 2016, half with Winnipeg. 2016, two games with Ottawa. 2017, Hamilton. 2018, the American of Alliance of Football. I was in San Antonio. 2019, BC Lions. 2020, XFL. 2021, I mean, 2020, New York Jets. 2021, Winnipeg, second stint. And then 2022 now, here with the Edmonton Elks. Wow. I got two stints with Ottawa? You know what? Yes, I forgot about I th- that. I don't one. think you played, right? You no, went, but you didn't. I didn't play, so, yeah, because that was six months post-ACL surgery, mm-hmm. five, six months. So I went in there, and uh, I, w- I obviously was not ready to – you know, I could compete, but just to over a course of a season, I don't think I would have lasted, right? And uh, so, yeah, I was second stint in, in Ottawa in 2018, yes. Yeah, and then uh, and two with BC and two with Winnipeg, right? One with BC. One with BC. So I re I can't believe Wikipedia is wrong. Right. So yeah. here's the thing. I did resign with BC after the uh, XFL oh, in 2020. Oh, that's, that's right. I but think... I never played with them because of the COVID. You had yeah, to okay. the season. So it was technically two. You had yes. two contracts here. So, uh, I w- apologize to Wikipedia. No, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> but the way that worked out was uh, after the XFL, I didn't get any uh, NFL calls. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to want to go somewhere where I can be, you know, at least more than one year finally, right? And so I signed a two-year deal in BC. And obviously, you know, hey, we'll start in June, 
they're like, no, July, August. And then finally, like, cancel season. And that's when they told us, hey, we'll give you two options. You can stay in your contract. And I believe they say you get a certain portion of your salary, right, from what I recall. Or two, you can get out of your contract, try the NFL, right? I'm 29 years old at the time. So I presented this to uh, my wife, Adriana, and because – I'm like, I can't make this decision on my own because at the time we were probably two, three months uh, pregnant with our baby boy now, right? So it's not about me anymore. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to talk about it with her. So I gave her the two options. And I honestly thought she was going to say, hey, let's stay in the contract just because we'll get um, – we're going to have some um, – what's the word I'm trying to look for? Uh, like a safety net. Stability. You know? Stability, yes. You know, we're going to have something coming in. You're gonna, you know where you're going to be going next year. And um, – and she said, no, you're getting out of that contract. You said, when I met you in 2015, you said you were going to make the NFL. So that gave me the whole confidence in the world. It's like, you know what, let's try the dream, the NFL dream, one more time. And uh, for, i uh, very fortunate that I got an opportunity with, uh, with the New York Jets in 2020. Cool. 11 teams in 10 years, that's got to be tough on the family life. Uh, yes and no. I mean uh, – for me, for the most part, is like at the end of the day, I'm getting paid to kick a football, right? And uh, Coach uh, Julian Tamez, who was my first soccer coach in high school, he's like my dad. He's like, Serge, you're getting paid to kick a football. So it's like when you boil it down like that, like yeah. I'm getting paid to kick a ball in front of 20, 30, 40,000 people, depending on how many people there is, get to hang out with the boys, you know, and I get to use that platform of football not only to show the abilities that have been given to me and to – but more than anything is to use that platform and try to help others along the line, right? Mm -hmm. I bet you there's kids who have come from my story who come from a single-parent home, right? And it's like, you know what? If Sergio Castillo can do it, then I can do it myself, right? Or maybe I can just say something, and if they get one thing out of this whole podcast and be like, you know what? I'm going to use that in my toolbox to try and achieve my dream, right? And all because I'm given that platform. And for me, that's what it's all about, right? It's, I'm here to play, have fun provide for my family, but if I can use that platform to impact the f future generations, it's a win. Born in Mexico? No, born in La Jolla, Texas, La right? La Jolla. La Jolla. I got to say that with yeah. La Jolla. La Jolla, Sorry. Texas. That was, that was terrible. No, it's all right, it's Man, all right. that's bad. La Jolla, Texas. Uh, La Jolla, Texas. Mm -hmm. How close is that to the border? You look at my backyard, border wash right there. Yeah. Right, we're five minutes away, right? So, like, uh, growing up, you know, if we wanted to get a haircut, you know, females, they want to get... Uh, pedicure, manicure, you want to go for a nice little cheap dinner, you just cross the border, hang out for the day, and come back, yeah. right? So, But all my family is from Mexico. I was the first one born in the United States. Uh, very fortunate, very blessed for that, right? And the thing as a first-generation Mexican-American, first generation, I want to let the kids know is, like, use the advantage of your status that you were born in the U.S. You're a citizen of the United States of America. You don't have to struggle, like, family and friends that I have is like they have all these hopes and dreams but they hit a plateau but because they're not from the U.S. or because they're illegal and they're not able to pursue those opportunities right and that's one thing that I want to pass down the line to kids if use a, the, the dream that's been given to you because you don't have to go through that you know uh, you know I didn't have to cross the border I didn't have to swim across right that that was paved way before me right so for me it's just like I didn't have that struggle. So for me, it's like I'm not going to throw away that the struggle that my family did to come to the U.S. for a better opportunity, for a better life. I'm like, I'm gonna, they brought me here. Or, I mean, I was already there, right? But they came over here for a better life. I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, how did your parents get here uh, to the U.S.? Uh, what did what, uh, they do for a living? Oh, uh, what did they do for a living? Um, so, like, my mom is a, a medical assistant and then, you know, basically grew up with my mom, you know, for the most part, my mom, my two aunts, and my grandma. Um you know, dad, you know, has been in and out he was, of my life, you know, mainly he was, a, he was jockey and, you know, I shoot it straight how it is, right? Life don't share code with you. You know, he was in prison for a while and, you know, we're starting to develop a relationship again, you know, after, you know, he was locked in for about 10 years, you know, so uh, the relationship is growing, right? So, because that's one thing I always lacked, you know, is, is that, that, you know, I had to follow figure with my coaches, but when it came to eating at the table, I, I always missed that. You know, I, I always had my mom, me, and it's just like there was always one scene missing. It was my dad. You know, and I was always jealous of my cousins, right, because I saw their mom, my aunt, and my uncle together. I'm like, why can't I have that, right? And every Father's Day is like up till I was like 22, 23 years old, I hated Father's Day. I disliked it because right? I had this so much pain inside. It's like, what's the point? And it wasn't until I finally, I'm like, let it go. I'm like, this is a story that's been given to me. These are the cards that have been given to me. I'm going to find a winner with this story, 
like five, ten years down the road, when I have my kid, I'm going to be there for him. I'm going to be there for my wife. You know, I'm going to be the husband that my mom didn't have. I'm going to be that father that I didn't have, right? So I've learned to overcome my demons, right? Overcome what I wish I had, you know, rather than that, focusing on what I, like, I, woke, I wish I had this. I'm like, no, you know what? This is what's been given to you. Go win with it. Run with it. How has that relationship with your father affected the relationship with your kids? How, oh, it's, how, it's, how much has it changed the way you approach it? Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I, all I know is to be present, right? I mean, Jared is only, what, 16, 17 months, but I'm, I'm there all the time, you know? And, and uh, so I take him everywhere with me. I take him to the gym. I take him to golfing. I take him to soccer. I take him to uh, when I go kick, when I go train kids so he can see. Right. And it's so funny. Right. Because, like now it's like you, you tell him do a squat. and He does a squat. Why? Because he sees mom and dad do it. Yeah. Right. The other day when uh, they were here last week, I put the ball on the tee. What do you do? He kicked it. Why? Because he sees daddy do it. Yeah. Right. He sees me hug his mom. What does he do? He goes hugs mom and dad, his mom. Right. So I I think it's very important to how I am with with my wife is a, is going to be big of how he treats not only mom, but women down the road. Right, treat him with respect, with dignity, because that's how it should be. Right? If not, the world is going to teach him how to treat people, and it's like, no, I want to educate my boy. Better you than them, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, family, familia, familia, very yeah. important to you. Yeah, all oh, hundred percent. You know, like I said, I grew up with uh, four women raising me: my mom, my two aunts, uh, my aunt Rosie, my aunt Berta, and my grandma Maria. Uh, they were real strict on me. Right, all four of them. Right, and you know, unfortunately, I had my two uncles. I had a. Um, my uncle Lupe and then my uncle Ramon, who, you know, may rest in peace. He passed away during a, during COVID. But, you know, that was a family that I grew up on my mom's side of my family, right? My dad's, you know, I kept in touch with them a little bit more than than, than my dad, actually, right? Uh, some uncles. But for the most part, all my dad's family is in Mexico. Um, so I grew up with, the, you know, all my mom's side of the family. I grew up with two, co- two boy cousins. I had baby Ray, Tito, and then two girl cousins, Data and Rebecca. Uh, the last one just graduated high school, Rebecca. So we're all older now, you getting into our careers. So um, anytime I get to go back home, it's uh, it's crazy how like man, I'm 31, but it seems just like we're running around, you know, like in elementary, middle school. Yeah. So time does go by fast. Played soccer when you were young. Oh uh, yes, yeah. my whole life. Uh, for it. me, that I thought I was going to play professional soccer. That was my thing, right? And um, you know, just crazy how I started kicking the football. I did not think that this would lead me, you know, 16 years later down the road kicking a ball. Yeah, it's amazing the turns life gives you sometimes. Right? Oh, 100%, right? You think you're going one way, and it's like you roll the dice, and, you know, life lands them this way, and you go this way. What's uh, what's Edmonton been like for you? Uh, uh, you, you obviously got here just before training camp. Mm-hmm. Um, football's football. Uh, I don't want to say it's exactly the same everywhere, but it's pretty mm-hmm. close to it. You know, you, you practice and yeah, yeah. You, know, you play. Uh, what's life away from football been like for you in Edmonton? It's been good. You know, I've been hanging out with the guys. You know, I've learned I, – I adjust quickly. You know, being in this 11 different teams in 10 years, I, I think you have to, to give – you have to learn to adjust quick, right? If not, it's going to be a very hard transition. So um, just very fortunate to be here. Right, more than anything, uh, finding things to do, finding some restaurants to do, go to restaurants. Right, when I feel homesick, I have places I go to, parks I go to, just to like walk around. I walk around a lot. Um, I have my favorite restaurant already. It's called Maria's uh, Mexican Northern Cuisine. I'm there like every three, four days. Food is just like back home. So, just to find places that, or hang out with people that can make me forget about home, make me feel like I'm at home, so it can make time uh, yeah. go by a little bit quicker when I'm outside of football. I'm interested. What part of Edmonton reminds you of, of home? Where do you go? Mm, honestly, so last night, I think I was telling you earlier, um, I found a, a, a city league, uh, the soccer league that Edmonton runs, the EDSA, I believe. So and back home in, in Amarillo, Texas, my wife and her best friend, they, they run a soccer league, and I, and I do TikTok videos. You know, I try to find sweet goals or, or saves or bloopers. And yesterday I finally found a league where – I can constantly go and record stuff. So that because that's my whole Saturday and Sunday back back at home, right? So being able to find that now that I know that there's a schedule out there and you can go almost three, four days out of the week definitely uh, reminds me of home. Oh, that's cool. Um, your wife was a professional soccer player? So, yeah, she she played at West Texas A&M University. She's a goalie there. She's a conference champion there. 
And then she had the opportunity to uh, go play in Israel. And she did sign a professional contract. Unfortunately, her grandma got sick at the time, so she had to come back. So now she's a head coach at a, at a Paladuro High School. She's been the head coach there for the women's soccer for the past 11 years. This past season, she took over the, the men's uh, boys team, the, the boys' team as well. So she took both teams to the playoffs, which was pretty sweet. And I think she was only the, the only woman uh, coaching a boys team in the whole state of Texas in the playoffs. So that was pretty sweet hmm. to experience. Uh, you're an athlete. She's an athlete. Things get pretty competitive around the house. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And, uh, uh, all the time. It, it doesn't matter if it's golf, if it's soccer, if it's, if we're playing chess, um, which most of the time I win. Right. <laughs> I like to, <laughs> to, to let her know. And she gets pretty mad. Uh, but it's also funny because I joke around a lot in the sidelines. And she's, like, all hardcore and focused. And she's like, you got to be more focused. I'm like, but that's not me, right? And the coaching comes out a lot on her. I'm like, sometimes I'm like, I just need you to hear me. I don't need you to be a coach, right? So she always has that competitive mode on. So, but, yeah, definitely it's there. Oh, that's cool. My, I, I get a phrase with my wife that I say, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a race. But if it was, I'd win. Right. right? That's, <laughs> that's the approach you got to take sometimes, yes. right? Uh, all right. Uh, we got more with Sergio Castillo coming up. In fact, uh, next up, we're going to talk about his first taste of CFL football. The Joey Moss Suite is the home for Antler Up. It's where we record each and every episode. you got a chance, and there's great sight lines here of the field. There's no doubt about that. You've got a chance to enjoy the game from here. If you're interested in purchasing the Joey Moss Suite for an upcoming Elks game, all you have to do is contact the Elks Suite team. Just email partnerships at goelks.com. Elks are on the road this week. Tomorrow, they're in Hamilton to play the Hamilton Tiger Cats. A couple of 0-3 teams are tangling, so somebody's going to get a win, aren't they? 30-23, to they lost to the Calgary Stampeders last Saturday as the Elks took another step, getting better moving forward. Uh, they'll try to get in the win column tomorrow against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. You can watch the game on TSN. You can listen to it on 6.30. Ched, uh, myself, and Dave Campbell will have the call for you. 4 o'clock for the countdown to kick off. 5.30 for the game from Hamilton. The Elks Elks and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Uh, the Elks are back home July 7th. It'll be the rematch against the Stampeders uh, Thursday night. Uh, you can get uh, all your ticket information at goelks.com for the Elks and the Stampeders Thursday, July the 7th here on the Brick Field at Commonwealth Stadium. Tomorrow night, though, it's the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Hope you enjoy that game. Hope you enjoy the second half of our conversation on Antler Up now with Sergio Castillo. Sergio, we mentioned the teams, 11 teams over 10 years. Uh, the 11th team is the Edmonton Elks. Uh, you signed a two-year contract, right, I think? Correct. You want to settle down? Is that, is that, yes. That's kind of the goal now? You want to 100%. kind of set up shop a little bit and yes. stay somewhere for a while? Yeah, I definitely do. And just to have some stability and, and know where I'm going to be next. Like, I go, going into offseason, I'm like, okay, I have this much time off. I can finally plan accordingly, mm -hmm. like, the offseason and, and maybe take a vacation. I haven't done, really had a vacation in, ever. Right, yeah. so you know, uh, that, like I said, but that's that's down the road. We we have a, a goal here, and it's to to win it all. You're in Edmonton now. It's kind of ironic. It ends up you're in Edmonton with Chris Jones because way back when was he not your first point of contact with the Canadian yes. Football League? So um, I remember I was working at Southside High School in twenty. It was in the spring of 2015. And I was a paraprofessional, basically like a substitute teacher there, right? I worked in the alternative center, and and I saw all these tryouts for the CFL, and I'm like, man, uh, in the states they don't show much of the CFL. Now they have ESPN, ESPN two, ESPN Plus show the games, but you know, growing up, first of all, I didn't watch much football, but I didn't hear about the Canadian Football League, right? So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna give this a try. I remember uh, Gary Zoner, who's my kicking coach early on, uh, he mentioned the CFL and how there was Americans going up there. I'm like, well, let me give it a shot. And I saw there was one with Edmonton Eskimos at the time. And uh, I remember I waited like six or seven hours in Hebron High School. And finally, Coach Jones was like, all right, let's do the kicking session. Well, we're on the turf field, and the field goal posts are gone. Like, well, first of all, they were never there, right? But there, there were just no field goal posts. So I was like, what the heck? How are we going to do this? And he's like, you know what? We're going to find a field. Well, there was a field next to the turf field. It was all grass. It was muddy. I slipped a couple times, but I ended up kicking decently. And he's like, man, you know, because of the ratio, and I didn't know how the ratio worked at the time. He's like, I can't 
I can't take you right now, right? And but that's where our our, our that first relationship with Coach Jones started. I hadn't played with him, never had played with him, but over the years we would keep in touch, right? Every time, you know, I, I would do well in the CFL, he would congratulate me, you know, send me a text. I remember when I signed with the Jets, the Monday night football game against New England, he sent me a text. He's like, hey, awesome, this and that, blah, blah. When he got the job in Toronto, I sent him a message, blah, 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 good job, congratulations. So we always had that uh, relationship, even though I had never played for him. So um, this past offseason when the opportunity came up to here, it was like, man, why not? You know, we finally, it, seven years later, we're finally making it come true. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. And he's great with that from what I understand. Like he's got a Rolodex of players that he keeps tabs on and keeps in contact with them. And sooner or later, they end up hooking up at some yeah, point and, and on I the think team. That's, that's what life is all about is making uh, relationships and getting to know people. And, if you know, you can do that. Those are the people that you want to work for, this, this coach I want to play for. 86.5% field goals. That's uh, one of the best uh, for, for your numbers. Um, your longest was seven, uh, 57 yards. Do you remember that? Where was it? With Hamilton. Hamilton. Uh, it was 20... I'm guessing it was windy that day. Uh, I, I it's actually, usually windy in Hamilton. Yeah, but uh, it was raining that day. Yeah. It was hardcore uh, raining that day. We were playing against Toronto. We were 0-8. It was June Jones' first game as a head coach for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And we got delayed for about, I'm going to say about close to two hours. Right? And it was right before the half. And he yelled. You know, I was a punter at that time. right? He's like, punt. And... The funny thing is, before, before that offseason, I had seen um, a documentary called The Pony Express on the SMU football team when they got canceled because of things they did back in the day. Well, towards the end, it shows June Jones, how he was a coach and how it showed he was very calm. And I'm like, when he finally came with us, I'm like, I wonder if he's this calm, right? And so when he fast forward to that game, he, he yells punt. And I'm like, coach, let's kick it. And I, I thought he was going to be like, no, no, we're not going to do it. And he's like, like, you got it? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, all right, punt, off field goal, let's go. And we're kicking 57 yarder right before the half. And nice. I'm like, yeah, I guess he is this calm. <laughs> nice. That's the way you get his confidence, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 57 yarder uh, against Toronto, and we ended up winning that game. What's the longest you've hit in practice? Uh, I know uh, before the Saskatchewan game, I was watching you in warm-up. You were hitting from 60 yards, I think, Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. What's um, the longest you've hit? Well, in Amarillo, we get a lot of wind. They say Chicago's a windy city, but Amarillo's a windy city, right? So I probably had like a good 25, 30 mile per hour wind. Uh, I had tried a 71 one time and it went in. Yeah. I had to put all rice and beans in that one. <laughs> did you get on tape? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, I actually did, yeah. yeah. That's important. That's <laughs> right? If not, it don't count. The pictures are doesn't count, right? Exactly. That's, that's what they say. Um you uh, you mentioned your family and everything. Are they here now? No. So um, my wife and my kid, they just left this past Saturday. And like I said, my uh, my wife runs a soccer uh, league in the summer, so she, that keeps her quite busy. Uh, we have a gym that we run back home. She runs her soccer camps for the boys and girls for the high school that she works at. So she had to go back. But hopefully uh, the third week of July, they'll be able to come up for another couple more weeks. Important to have them around, eh, I guess? A hundred percent, right? Before, you used to miss just one person. Now that you have a little boy running around, you miss two people, and it just makes it a lot harder for sure. Uh, I went back and looked. Uh, you got a couple uh, important rouges in your career. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of the one in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, at the back of the end zone. Yeah. So you... And two in the Grey Cup game, which turned out to be pretty yeah, important yeah, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, that's that's one of the cool things about the Canadian Football League is the. I, I know no one ever wants to miss a field goal, right? Mm -hmm. But at least you get something out of it sometimes, yeah. right? That it, it's important. Sometimes. Yeah. So technically, I'm 100 percent on game winning kicks. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I remember that that uh, <laughs> that uh, in Toronto we were hitting a 35 yarder, make it down the middle, but we had an offsides penalty, and uh, so we got backed up five yards. And I remember the ball just going over the left upright, and I remember just cussing a storm out like. I was mad that I missed. And the referee comes up to me. He's like, Serge, you guys won the game. I'm like, what do you mean? I had totally forgot about the Rouge. <laughs> and so technically I'm 100% on, on, on game-winning kicks. And then the, the kickoff on the, uh, in, in the Grey Cup game ended up being a Rouge, ended up being key because if not, we're only up by two, and then Hamilton goes up and kicks a game winner. Yeah. Right? So very uh, fortunate that we had to win in the fourth quarter and uh, got lucky with that. You had a pretty good day in the Grey Cup last year. Yeah, it was fun. Um, so going in, back into Winnipeg last year, uh, the last game I had played was against Seattle Seahawks. It was December 13th. I went one for four, right? 
after the game, called the wifey. I'm like, pack up the bags. I know I'm going to get cut, you know. Sure enough, the next day I got cut. And But the last three weeks of me starting New York, when they told me, Serge, the rest of the season is yours. I started telling myself something I had never did. And it's like, I have to be perfect. And I entered in this phase of just being anxious all the time. I was dealing with anxiety. I, I didn't even feel comfortable being in my own apartment, right, because I just had all these negative thoughts. And, and finally, the, la the last game, I fell apart. So going into Winnipeg was like, can I find myself? Can I be myself again, right? First couple games, I'm kind of like, ah, struggling, you know, mentally. I'm making my kicks, right, but I miss one here, one here, blah, blah, blah. And finally, we're in Calgary, you know, miss a 52, but then we hit – Three forty-five plus yarders in Calgary last game of the season. I'm like, fine, okay. I'm getting on a roll, confidence booster up. Uh, we play in Saskatchewan. We play against Saskatchewan. Go three for three and extra points. And this is when I found out that I'm like, okay, I'm back to myself. The day of the Great Cup, I wake up and I'm like, you know what? I want to go stretch a little bit. So I go and I get a day pass at um, Good Life Gym. I go in the sauna and while I'm I'm about to leave, and I see the refrigerators, and I see a C4 pre-workout. I'm like, hmm. I get a little excited. I bought one. Ten minutes in, the juices are flowing, pre-workout's kicking in. I went full-on back workout, bicep workout, like an hour and a half on the day of the Great Cup. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm like, I get a workout in. My wife calls me, her mother-in-law, and uh, my mom, her her brother were here. She's like, hey, my mom's making breakfast. I'm like, heck yeah, I'm going, you know. That's why I can never lose weight back at home because her mom cooks really good. Fresh homemade tortillas that they have brought from Texas. You know, nice breakfast. Start watching Shrek. I love Shrek with my boy, right? I only get to like three quarters of it, right? Because then I have to go back to the hotel and then go back to the game. Get to the game, start off well, get to halftime. And this is when I noticed I'm back to myself. It's a 30-minute halftime rather than 15 minutes because of the halftime show. What I do, I, start, I finish the, the movie Shrek. And I'm like, you know what? I'm back to myself. And, and I found myself again, right? I was joyful. I was joking around with the boys. And uh, very fortunate to have the kicks that I had. The offense put me in a great opportunity to help the team out. And I ended up winning the whole show. And Shrek... And is Shrek. the bottom line Shrek for bottom Winnipeg's line. Grey Cup last <laughs> right? year. It's because of Shrek. <laughs> because of Shrek. Five for five that day. That's a pretty good day. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, where's the ring? Uh, I haven't gotten it yet. So hopefully. No? No, not yet. So uh, They're not holding out on you, I are know, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I need to message them. So yeah. uh, see when uh, – they'll probably – maybe they'll – Bring it up here. When yeah, we play them coming in a couple, in a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks, so yeah, you but, can kick the game winner, and then they can give you a ring. Give you a ring, right? right? <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. We got three questions to wrap it up. We call it the red zone. All Same right. three questions for everybody. Uh, we switched one of them around a couple of weeks ago, so we'll see how you do with that one. Uh -huh. uh, first question, and you can go as short or as long as you want with the answer. First CFL game you ever saw? First CFL game I ever saw was when we play. I was in Hamilton, and we beat Winnipeg at home. And Zach Caleros was the quarterback at the time in Hamilton, and they were just rolling in all phases. So, so, so the the first game you saw, you played in. I yeah. was a backup. Yeah. Okay, backup. but you hadn't you yeah. hadn't seen a CFL game before yeah. you played in one. Eh? Exactly. Okay. Uh, second question, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna include soccer in this because right. that's football, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, most memorable football game you've ever been a part of. So I'm gonna have to say 2017. I'm with Hamilton Tiger Cats. It's a must win for us to keep our hopes alive. We're in BC, right? It was an 8 o'clock game, which was like 11 o'clock for us, right? So by the time it was fourth quarter, it was 1-ish, one, one right? I was falling asleep. I start out, I think I only had one miss prior to that game. I start 0 for 2, hit the goalpost not once but twice. And there's a quote that I write. So I, every game I have a little piece of paper. Right, and I put words of affirmation, verses, quotes, and I keep it right here in my, my hip pocket. Right, and anytime I feel an ounce of doubt or anxiety, I pull that list out and I read it. So, and it, it, even before a field goal, I'll go out and read it. Right, and we're driving, driving, and I can see it's gonna be a long one, and it'll be in a 53 yarder. And I read it, I'm like, you know what, just ask June, let's kick it, Coach Jones. And he's like, got it, kick the 53 right before the half. I was one for three, right, going into the half. Kicked the short 30-yarder, and then we ended up making this 
crazy comeback that ended up setting me up for a 50-yard game winner left hash. So that has to be probably the memorable game. Um, well, I guess a great cup one too, right? Yeah. And then when I debuted it too, right? It, I was with Winnipeg against BC, went five for five, hit a game winner, right hash, 41 yards. Nice. So, right. Not a bad way it's to okay start. okay to have three memorable games. Right. That's fine. <laughs> Some guys don't have any, so, you know, you're good. All right, last one, uh, most famous name in your phone. Most famous name in my phone, Oswaldo Sanchez. He was, uh, at one point, he was a Mexico starting goalie uh, from 2003 till 2011, right? And he's probably, the, in my opinion, he's the best goalie in, in Mexico's uh, history, right? He played for my favorite soccer team, Chivas, growing up. And uh, he's one of my boys, though, so I don't know. If, yeah. Counts. Yeah, that counts. Counts. Thanks for your time, Sergio. It's good I, getting to know you. I appreciate it. And if there's any... If there's anyone out there, you know, there's young athletes that have any, they have, want any advice for football, sports, life, school, academics, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm here to help out any way that I can. Excellent. Great stuff. Uh, Sergio Castillo uh, sitting with me here in the, uh, the new studios in the Joy Moss suite for uh, Antler Up, where we are each and every week uh, for the show. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, give us a message if you want as well. Tell us what you want to see coming up on Antler Up. Go back in the archives too. Uh, Chris Jones, Aaron Grimes, Trey Ford, uh, there's Costigan, there's a whole bunch of guys in there. Uh, all good watches or listens, depending on what your, uh, what your uh, choice is. So uh, feel free to go back and have a look. He's Sergio Castillo. I'm Morley Scott. I'll see you next time on Antler Up. Antler Up, Edmonton, touchdown out. James Wilder Jr.'s got a pair. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Mike Jones has it inside the 10. He'll walk the dog to the end zone. Antler Up, Edmonton, touchdown Elks.